All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be talking about the New York Giants. Now, with the draft being about a week or so removed, the Giants aren't getting much praise from the NFL draft. However, if you zoom out and you take a look at this team from like a three to five year scale, the Giants look great. All right, they look absolutely great. And I also think they had a very slept on, very good offseason. You acquired Darren Waller. And when Darren Waller is healthy, he is one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. I know it's a big if, but you could say the same thing about every player that exists in every single sport. I like the pieces of Paris Campbell in the offseason, get some speed on this team. But at the same time, I think the additions of guys like Bobby O'Karake, linebacker from the Colts, and Rakeem Nunez Roaches, I think those two specific moves in the offseason are being overlooked. Real quick, let's take a look at Bobby O'Karake because you know one of the biggest, I guess, kind of issues people had, NFL insiders, draft analysts, whatever it is, whatever you want to use, the issue people had with the Giants draft was that they didn't address defense as much as people were anticipating but once again i look at the defense as far as free agency goes with those two additions like just as an example you know the giants didn't have a great defense last year right they ranked 31st in yards per carry last season with 5.2 and they just in general weren't a great rushing defense to me that's a big reason why you got rakeem and you got bobby Bobby in the last two seasons has averaged 141 and a half total tackles. Last season, in 17 games played with Indianapolis, he had 151 tackles. 99 of those were solo. So I think those two moves were huge as far as just helping to continue to bolster your defense now real quick before we get any further into today's video if you guys enjoy it be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button for daily nfl content i love my giants fans so much you guys are fully aware of how slept on this team is right now but if we give this video to 250 likes that would mean the world to me now I view this giant squad as a huge dark horse. You know, the fact that they did what they did last season, you went nine and seven and one. And then when you look a little bit deeper into the statistics, the Giants only finished 18th in total offense, and they only finished 25th in total defense. So those stats at face value are not great. However, they had a great rushing game with Saquon Barkley. They had a top 11 time of possession percentage and a positive turnover differential. You know, Daniel Jones only threw five interceptions. Brian Dable got him right. And that's how you win, really. Once we get into the playoffs, that's how you win. You want to dominate time of possession you want to limit and neutralize or not neutralize but you want to completely limit turnovers you want to win the turnover battle but ideally you don't want to turn the football over so you know even if we go back to the nfl draft i'm looking at it i'm like all right pick number 24 Deontay banks cornerback out of maryland i think he helps a lot and you pair him up with wink martindale who wink is just a genius in his own regard but Deontay banks has all the pieces you want in a upcoming prospect or in this case an already you know just a rookie he has all the process he has everything i want him to the giants last season only had six interceptions i'm not saying deontay banks next year is going to have five picks but it's a huge step in the right direction deontay is a player who's going to come in day one and make an immediate impact day one starter immediate impact on this giants team and who knows you know, the Giants went 9-7-1 and seven and one last year, got into the playoffs in the loaded NFC East division, and they won a playoff game. You know, they took down the Minnesota Vikings. So I'm thinking, all right, you know, even if Deontay starts off a little iffy, starts off, you know, struggling, you see a lot of the mistakes, I'm pretty sure Wink Martindale and this Giants staff is going to get him ready to go come playoff time. Now, I know we're obviously talking like many, many months and the draft just ended and we haven't even, you know, we're not even at training camp. We're not even at really anything right now. I know it's getting a little ahead of myself, but still, Deontay Banks, by the time next season ends, will have a huge impact on this Giants defense. And just to touch once again on that draft, John Michael Schmitz, center. Out of Minnesota, another day one starter, another guy who's going to come in and make an immediate impact. 
immediate impact, all right? I love the draft pick. It gives you reliability. It gives you sturdiness. It's something at the center position that the Giants haven't had in quite some time, and it's something that they desperately wanted, and I'm loving it because John Michael Schmitz is going to be a stud, honestly, to me, the second he steps out onto that football field. Round three, pick number 73, Jalen Hyatt. You know, the big thing right now is like, all right, well, his former teammate, Cedric Tillman, went just one spot later. You know, he could be Cedric Tillman's the possible number one target. You know, do the Giants have a legitimate number one target? Well, with Paris Campbell, with Jamison Crowder, with Darren Waller, and now with Jalen Hyatt, I feel perfectly okay with the Giants wide receiver staff next season. I get it. You know, every team would love the Giants specifically to help to help out Jones would love to have a guy like DeAndre Hopkins, right? You know, just a solidified, no questions asked, undisputed wide receiver one. But I go back to the whole thing where it's like, if we just zoom out on the Giants on like even a two year time frame, you know, just the next five seasons in general, this team is on the up and up. And so I'm not sitting here saying, I don't think even Giants fans are sitting here saying, and yeah, we're going to make the Super Bowl. We're going to win the Super Bowl next season. You know, it, it's not that cut and dry. They're just building the blocks. You have a great coaching staff. You have great existing talent. You're re-signing guys like DJ. We also saw Dexter Lawrence get a 90 million 40, 40 year extension i absolutely love it dexter lawrence is a stud last year made a pro bowl made an all pro team i mean this guy is a beast seven and a half sacks but he had 65 total 68 sorry total tackles he had 28 total quarterback kids dexter lawrence is one of the best young defensive linemen in the entire national football league so you're paying the guys you want to pay you're still remaining flexible out there and you're making moves. You're being aggressive. You're getting guys like Darren Wall. You're getting guys like Bobby O'Karake, Rakeem Nunez, Roches, who once again, he's going to help out this rush defense greatly. You know, the stats for defensive linemen, defensive tackles, nose tackles, whatever it is, they're not going to blow you out of the water. Last season in just 10 starts, played all 17 games for Tampa, but just 10 starts. He had two sacks, 33 combined tackles. Five tackles for loss, a couple of quarterback hits. They're just building the blocks. That really is my point here is they're just building the blocks. And then finally, we'll touch on real quick Eric Gray to help provide more depth for Mr. Saquon Barkley. Eric Gray, I know he was picked in the fifth round. I think I speak for a lot of draft insiders. I don't know how he fell to round five. I really don't. He provides great depth. He can run the ball. He can catch the ball. He's a player's coach. You just, you love a guy like Eric Gray, I guess is really, and until he steps out onto the field, I think then a lot of more people will be aware for it. I know Giants fans are excited about him, and I know they're excited for this draft. So I was reading an article, and it gave, you know, the New York Giants in this draft class a C plus, and I'm thinking, oh, I don't get it. You know, if you're going to be a little bit more pessimistic, or if you're going to be, you know, take the more wait and see approach, I think you have to at least give the New York Giants a B grade. But me personally, I'm going B plus. I'm going A minus. I think they had a great draft. I think they, in fact, had an A minus draft, or sorry, off season at worst. You pair that with a B plus draft. This is an A off season. This is at least an A minus off season for the New York Giants, who are already on their way to the up and up so the Giants focused on exactly what I needed to you know we talked about it all offseason every Giants video I made all offseason we talked about a couple of positions we talked about the cornerback position we talked about the center or the offensive line but more specifically the center and we talked to possible wide receiver guy and that's what they did with their first three picks in the first three rounds so it's hard to be upset about that so the C plus grade I'm just not quite get back and I'm not quite getting behind that I'm not going to back that one up so let me know what you guys are thinking go ahead give the Giants a total offseason grade thus far as always if you enjoyed it be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button and I'll see you guys later